it's the call again um i'm queer mom acing it here on youtube and um over on instagram also on tiktok if that's your thing but um hello <laughs> this is my video on uh brands i've put on sabbatical um inspired by the wonderful scars to stars beauty um so yeah let's just get it right into this this is um, brands that I am putting on a buying hiatus. I'm not full on canceling them because that doesn't solve anybody's problems, but there's just been a few too many red flags for me to feel comfortable purchasing from them right now. Um, if you watched, uh, Danny's video, uh, there's going to be some overlap because there's definitely a lot of overlap in, uh, Danny and I's concerns and our morals and things. Uh, so yeah, moving on. I'm just going to go right into it. Um, the first one on my list, I'm going to talk about ColourPop. Um, if you don't know, um, ColourPop is in a little bit of hot water right now with the LGBTQIA plus community, of which I am a part of, um, which is kind of evident in the name. <laughs> but yeah, um, as many of you might know, um, the author of Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling, is a raging uh, bigot. She has uh, made it abundantly clear that she does not believe that uh, trans women are women, uh, which is, of course, absolutely wrong. Um, so uh, many of you fellow Potterheads like me, um, have been participating in the, uh, death of the author for many years at this point. Well, um, ColourPop just recently, well, last year, um, did a collab with the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, which means that money from that collection went to J.K. Rowling. And the problem with this is that ColourPop says that they support the LGBT. You can't do that and profit off of the works of a loud and proud turf. That is completely hypocritical. So until they um, figure out what they stand for. Um, I'm not promoting them. I am not purchasing from them. They are on sabbatical. That's basically the rundown of what's going on with ColourPop and why I'm not purchasing from them. Um, and I've made it clear in previous videos what my stance is on br brands that become problematic after you purchase from them or brands that you don't find out are problematic until after you've purchased from them. And uh, my view on it is you keep using that. You keep using that. Nobody, it's just like the JK Rowling thing. Nobody's telling you to stop reading the books. No one is telling you to stop enjoying the movies. Nobody is telling you not to write your fan fiction. We're saying, try to give as little money as possible to JK Rowling. Uh, so in this case, it's like, if you have the makeup, use the makeup. You spent your hard earned money on that makeup, use it. Um, for those of us that are in the creator space, there is the added layer of, if you don't agree with the brand's morals, but you already own a bunch of the brand's stuff, you still use it but we don't talk about it. We don't promote it. You know, we don't put our name behind those brands. So that's really like what we're talking about here. Um, the next one on my list is uh, Pat McGrath. Um, there is the whole Star Wars collection debacle, um, which essentially boils down to uh, she put, as part of her collection, a uh, repackaged palette that she already had. Um, and on top of that palette, 
already being for not only for sale on her website, but on sale on her website. So she took a clearance product and was then reselling it at full price. And it was advertised as being in collector's packaging, but it had a sticker on it. Like it was the normal packaging, but it had a sticker on it. That's not, I, I'm a collector, not of Star Wars specifically, but I am a huge nerd and I am a huge collector. Uh, and that is not collector's quality. No, no one, no one that collects anything would think that slapping a sticker on something makes it a collector's piece. That would be like me taking my Walmart water bottle, putting a Star Wars sticker on it and calling it official Disney merchandise. N no, no, it's a sticker. It is a sticker. She's charging people $50 for a sticker. Do not forget, Pat McGrath is a luxury brand. This is not luxury brand behavior. On a personal note, um, I very recently, and by very recently, I mean, just, I, had, I got my purchase the day that the whole Star Wars thing came to light. The day. <laughs> So that was super fun, but I bought a lipstick um, during her Black Friday sale. And, oh, I should go get that. Okay, just, a, just I mean, it'll, it will literally be a second because I'm gonna cut this part out. Okay, this is also, um, you can also watch me <laughs> find this out live uh, when you watch my um, unboxing video. I believe it is, my part two um, unboxing of my Black Friday haul purchases. Anyway, so this is the lipstick. I opened it up and look at this. Look, it's fuzzy. It's fuzzy. The areas where it's darker is where I've touched it. Um, because I just could not believe that this was happening. It's just, can, does, does this scream luxury to you? My very first luxury pur purchase, and I opened the box, I'm all excited because the packaging is just so high quality and it feels luxurious. I scroll it up and this is what I see. How heartbreaking is that? I have in fact contacted um, the brand because I'm like, I would like a refund. I don't even know if my lipstick is safe to use. Most people are telling me that it is something called wax blooming, which it happens when a lipstick or a product with wax in it is exposed to different temperatures or humidity. But no, there's no like official word from Pat McGrath as to why her lipsticks are doing this. Um, or I should say her company. Um, why their lipsticks are doing this, if they're still safe to use. And they haven't tried, like, they have to be aware of this. Um, I know people, I sp spoke to people that have 10 plus Pat McGrath lipsticks and they've all done this. So they have to be aware that these lipsticks are doing this and no word, no word. I don't even know if this is safe to use. That's so heartbreaking, like so heartbreaking. So, I mean, I'm, yes, I will, not only is she usually outside my price range, I will not be convinced to purchase from her again for a good long while. If I'm gonna pay luxury prices, I expect to get a luxury product at the end of that. Anyway, that was a bit salty. Uh, moving on, we're gonna talk about uh, Natasha Denona. Again, this is kind of old drama in that it happened last month. 
Um, the difference, the difference is that um, it happened to a friend of mine. Um, you might have seen it going around Instagram. You might have seen it on Reddit that um, a individual had an allergic reaction um, due to their Carmine allergy to a Natasha Denona product. And if you don't know, Carmine is a pigment that is made from crushing up a little beetle. Um, it produces the organic um, red pigments. Uh, so it is found in a lot of makeup products. Uh, my friend, this is uh, Stephen of Fortitude here on YouTube and over on Instagram. Um, he just happens to be allergic to it. He just happens to be very sensitive to it. So he checks these things. Well, Natasha Denona is marked as a vegan brand. The product that he bought is mar was marked on the website as a vegan product. To be fair, the packaging when it came in did in fact list Carmine in, in the ingredients, but that doesn't, that doesn't um, negate the fact that it was still marked as a vegan product. So if something is marked as vegan and you have an allergy to something, to like an animal product, you wouldn't check the ingredients list on that product because it's listed as vegan. So it shouldn't have that ingredient in it, right? Well, he contacted the brand and they changed it. And before they got back to him, they changed it on their website to no longer list that product as vegan. And then emailed him back saying, oh, well, it's not marked as vegan on our website. And if you check the ingredients list, it does say that it has carmine in it. It only now says that it's vegan, that it's not vegan on their website. So they just like fully gaslit him. That went from being a simple mistake to a full on nefarious action. So, um, yeah, um, I also like, that's the thing about all the brands on this list is I have at least one thing from all of these brands. Um, with Natasha Denona, I have one of her, uh, uh, mini palettes. When for mini palettes, I have the mini tropic. It's okay. It's okay. Like I've never really got the hype behind Natasha Denona, but Steven, the individual that this happened to, they're a big fan. They're a big fan of Natasha Denona. They have almost all of her palettes. And then she goes around and does this to them specifically. Not cool. Mm -mm. Not cool. Anyway, we're moving on. Um, we're going to move on to my, um, no, no, I was going to move on to the last brand. Um, but, um, I am going to, I, instead, I'm going to talk about this. Um, I personally don't buy from KVD Beauty. Um, and I know that Kat Von D is not associated with them anymore, but it completely rubs me the wrong way. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not, it, I'm not going to buy something with the name of a known and active anti-vaxxer on it. Mm -mm. And she was an anti-vaxxer before COVID. So I can only imagine the depths of depravity she has sunk to at this point. Just, mm -mm. Mm -mm. not only does she not, has she not come up with anything, or I should say, not only has the brand not come up with anything that has in any way been very exciting for many years now, um, at least to me personally, but I just don't feel comfortable having something with her branding on it in my possession, like paying money for that. There are plenty of other brands I can spend my money on that don't give me that icky feeling 
you know? So, I mean, I'm not going to shame anybody else from buying from, from that brand. I totally get it. I totally get it, especially if you are a purely vegan makeup buyer. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Anyway, moving on for real to my uh, last brand on my sabbatical list, um, which is just a really non-shady way of saying they're currently on my shit list. <laughs> But um, Morphe, Morphe, not only were they really on my, I'm not interested in this brand, no tea, no shade, I'm just not interested um, for a long while, just because their products are not all that great. And anyone who witnessed the fallout from the like days of huge, beauty and by makeup influencers on this platform knows that that stuff is just has a lot of negative vibes associated with it so I'm just I'm I'm good I'm good like I didn't need I don't need them I really don't not only that you might have heard their name coming up recently and uh, the reason for that is they decided to close all of their stores in the in the US specifically and didn't give their employees any answers or any notice. Yeah. <laughs> that does not scream a company whose morals align with mine, nor does it scream a company that has any morals whatsoever. So, no. Mm -mm. I I no. Mm -mm. No. No, no. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna purchase from a brand that treats their dedicated employees that badly when I have other options. No, no, thank you. <laughs> in, in the words of the great Ariana Grande, thank you. Next. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, um, I hope you enjoyed me being um, quite brutally honest and slightly shady and very, very salty. <laughs> um, I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, I hope this also kind of like lets you know where I stand in a lot of different ways. Um, if you want to know what is on my face um, today, I am wearing the Clarity Cosmetics Lily palette. Just look at the look at this multi-chrome baby. Look at it. Ah, isn't it wonderful? Let me show you. Ah. If you watched my unboxings, my Black Friday haul series, you'll remember this as well. Because this was a um, Black Friday purchase for me. And on my lips, I have a Lime Crime liquid lipstick. This one in particular is in the shade Luna. I really, really like the color. The formula is a bit different than I'm used to. It is very thin, um, both on the lips, not color-wise, but on the lips, it feels very thin, which is good, is good. Um, but when you apply it, it's very, very viscous, which I was not as expecting like at all. But like I said, I'm getting used to the formula because it's just very different um, from what I am used to. So, but I love the color. I'm definitely willing to put <laughs> a bit of work into it for a color payout this lovely. <laughs> anyway. Thank you so much for um, dropping by, listening to me rant. Um, I will have Danny Scars for Stars, um, who inspired me to do this uh, video, the originator of the brand sabbatical uh, video. Li I'll link her down below as well as um, Stephen of Fortitude. Um, they both make incredible content. I'm 
big fans of them, um, as well as being lucky, lucky enough to be able to call them friends. So yeah, um, I had a lot of fun and I hope you did too. And please like and subscribe. I am still trying to get up to 50 subscribers so that um, I can do a live get ready with get ready with me's here on YouTube. Um, and I'd greatly appreciate it if you did. So hopefully I'll see you again. Until then, bye.